Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I want to show you how to add row level charts or spark lines to either the table or matrix table in Power BI Desktop. This is a great way to add additional value and context to a table without needing to take up any additional room on the reporting page as space can often be limited. So let's get started. So what I have in front of me is a page from one of the reports that I host on my website. I'll include the link in the description in case you're curious about this and want to dig into it a bit more. But what I want to draw your focus to is the matrix table in the lower right. Do you notice those very small spark lines that are inside of each of those cells under the sparkline column? That's what I created using SVG images that are being rendered in real time. As you can see, if I make a selection here, those will update as well. Now there's a couple of cool techniques and tricks that I use to make these really dynamic and work really well. As an example, you can see that if I have a single year selected, the lines down here are a little bit thicker, the dots are a little bit bigger. When I have two years selected, the lines get a little bit thinner, the dots get a little bit smaller, and so on and so forth. So I've done a couple of clever techniques to really make sure that at any granularity, with the number of data points showing, and it adapts really well as the number of data points change. Now what I want to do is walk you through how I did all of this. Now the original formula that's creating this sparkline I got from David Eldersfeld over at Blue Granite. I'll make sure to link to the Power BI article he wrote. But then I added a few more things to get it to look a lot like the sparklines you see here at the top. All of these sparklines up here are actually the sparklines created by OKViz, okay uh, the people at, over at SQL BI, Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. And I really wanted to create a sparkline that resembled these quite a bit, having the dots for the lows and highs, the endpoint dot, as well as that nice smooth line that's in here. And that's what I tried to create with this. As you can see, it looks very similar. Let's walk through the DAX formula. Now this is one of those scenarios and the analogy that I love to use is you don't need to know how to build the car to know how to drive it. This will be a very similar scenario. There's a lot of data points in here and variables that all go into essentially what is here at the end. See that little variable for the SVG image URL that is outputted from the measure, which then is translated into an image uh, by the rendering tool in Power BI Desktop. Now, the only things in here that you will need to edit are up at the top. I've made sure to put all these variables up here, and those are going to be the line color, which will determine the color of the line itself, the fill color, and what that is is that light gray that you see here that follows the direction of the general flow of the data. The max and min dot color are pretty self-explanatory. That's the high and low point colors for the dots. And then there's the first and last. And now as well, the, this thing down here, the number of dashes, when you change this number, what that will do is that will change your line from solid to dash. And the number that you put into here will determine how many actual dashes are showing up on that line. So I left that in there as an option for those who want to adjust that at all. If you want to change the line from solid to dashed. Now, the only other thing in here that I would say that you can change as well is any of these things down at the bottom. Right now, as you can see that there are four options for circles, one, two, three, and four. That is the first, the last, the max, and the min for those little dots that show up onto there. Now, if you don't want any of these, and as an example, I commented out this by putting two forward slashes in there, that comments out that first one, which means that that dot will not show up. So I don't want that first one. All I want to show is a dot for the last one, a dot for the max, and a dot for the min value. So there's a little bit of editing down here, but not too much. Now, the other thing that I want to point out as well is you'll notice that down here, there is the has one value. I have this in here for a very specific reason. What that is doing, if you look over here, you'll see that the grand total is blank. So that's preventing that from showing up in that area. If I didn't have this here, what you would end up with is a big blob of code down there showing the underlying code for the SVG file because it doesn't render the images at that level. Now there is going to be a little bit of replacement. There's going to be two places that you'll need to update. You'll notice that there's a few spots in here that have calendar, month, and year. That's simply the date field. So if you see that, replace it for whatever date field you want to use. If you wanted to, to show data points based off a of date or based off of quarter or based off of year, that's what would go into there. Just replace those anywhere you see it. And a couple of times in here as well, there is the total sales amount because that's the actual data point that I'm showing. So a few things to swap around in general, but the majority of this in here, you won't need to touch. And I will just point out one other clever thing that I did as well. So you might notice that the circle size and view box offset that I included here, what I did with that and actually the stroke width as well, all three of these, look at the number of data points. So there's 24, 12 in each one of these scenarios. And what that is doing is it's looking at the number of distinct data points that exist. And it's basically creating that thinner line and the smaller dots as the data point count increases. So I kind of have three buckets. The smallest amount or one year or less has the thickest line and the biggest dots. One to two years has slightly smaller. And then third has that thinnest one. So it kind of has a nice scalability with the number of data points just to make it look good. And those can be adjusted if you need to. 
But again, the majority of the things that you'll really want to edit for the most part are just going to be the uh, formatting settings up here for the colors that you want, and then just updating the column and measure names anywhere in here. Now, the only other thing I want to mention as well is the fact that once you've done this, if you want it to show up as an image in here, it does need to be formatted as, let me go to the modeling tab. It needs to have a data category of image URL. This was an October update in 2018, which allows them to have data categories for DAX measures, and that's what's allowing it to render. Now, at the time of recording this, it has to be a square image. So there's a reason that that spark line is in a nice, clean square box, and I can't make that super long and have that uh, be more of a rectangle or anything. That's something that may or may not be coming in the future. I don't know yet. I know it's a requested feature, um, but hopefully at some point down the road, they might allow for some longer images that don't have to uh, maintain a fixed aspect ratio. All right, well, overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually had quite a lot of fun building this out, getting help from a few others, such as Phil Seamark, who was very gracious to help show me how to add the dots to that, and a little bit of polishing up to get it to, as I said, kind of match up with that OK Viz sparkling that you see at the top. That way it keeps consistency in the report. If you liked this video, please click that like button or add a comment down at the bottom. And if you want to see more of these, please click that subscribe button. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.